Um, in this video we're going to look at angle facts. We're going to look at angles involving parallel lines and we're going to look at bearings. Angles involving parallel lines. Now the two lines here in black are parallel and we can sh uh, show that they're parallel by putting an arrowhead, a pair of arrowheads showing that these two lines are parallel. This crossing line in red is sometimes also referred to as the transverse. Let's look at some angles that are formed. Let's look at this angle here, say it was 76 degrees and we were after finding this angle here. Now, the two angles form part of an F. That means that they are corresponding angles. Now, corresponding angles have this property. Corresponding angles are equal. So x equals 76 degrees. Now why are they? Why do we use the word corresponding? Well corresponding uh, roughly means similar. And if you look, the 76 degree angle is below its parallel line and so is the unknown angle x. The 76 degree angle is to the right of the crossing line, the transverse, or above if you will, and so is the angle x. They're in similar positions below and above to the right of the transverse. Now, let's look at another pair of angles that uh, are formed. This angle here, let's say that this angle here is 124 degrees and we're after finding this angle here. I'll give it a different letter. Angle Y. Well they don't form an X, uh, big one, they don't form a um, an F, but what they do form is they form something like the letter Z. Now, that means if they form a Z that they are alternate angles. Now, alternate angles have the same property as corresponding angles that equal. So Y equals 124 degrees. Let's have a look again at why we use the word alternate. Right, the angle 124 is below its parallel line. The angle Y, the unknown one, is above. The angle 124 degrees is to the left if you look along the line of the crossing line, the transverse, angle Y is to the right. So they're in alternate different positions where one is below, one's above, one's to the left, one's to the right. Now the final pair of angles we're going to look at are these angles here, sometimes forgotten about. Here we go, we'll call them angle Z and we'll make this angle equal to, let's have a look, 80 one degrees. Now these two angles don't form an F, they don't form a Z, but they do form a C. These pair of angles are known as co-interior angles. They're sort of inside this little uh, shape formed by the three lines here. And co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees when the lines are parallel. So Z plus 81 degrees must equal 180 and that means that Z is well 180 take away 81 which is 99 degrees. Now let's look at bearings because they're quite uh, closely linked. Okay now we're going to look at bearings. Now the bearing is the direction you must travel to get to another place. Let's have a look at the bearing you must travel on to get from Amersham to Beckenham. So it's from Amersham, I use the letter A, to Beckenham, I use the letter B for Beckenham. The word from tells us where we put our protractor. Now just to make things easier, we're going to draw a line, a straight line from Amersham to Beckenham. Now I'm going to measure the angle that I have to turn through from north. So let's get my protractor out. Um, let's make that a 361. It's a bit easier with that. Then I center it on Amersham. I turn it so that 0 degrees is due north. Now I'm going to measure the angle and let's have a look. What is the angle I turn through from north? Well, it looks like it's bang on 60 degrees. So the bearing from Amersham to Beckenham is 60 degrees. We generally, if it's only got two figures, 
put another zero in front because we want to make it a three figure bearing. So that's the direction I must travel. I must turn 60 degrees from north to face Beckenham. Let's just get rid of that protractor. Now, what about something called back bearings? These are grade C. The back bearing, just remind ourselves that that's 60 degrees, is the direction I must travel on to get back to where I started from. Now, in other words, it's the direction I must travel uh, on from Beckenham back to Amersham. It's this angle here. Now, I can use some of my knowledge of parallel lines here. What's this angle here? Well, if we look, these two lines here, the two north lines, must be parallel. They're both pointing north. And if we look at the two angles in blue, they form a C. That is, these two angles are co-interior. Remember from our earlier uh, part of the video, they add up to 180, so that must be 120 degrees. Now, I know a full turn is 360 degrees. Therefore, this bit here in black, that must be 360, take away 120, it must be 240 degrees. Okay, I hope that helped. Thank you.